emergency situation. Oh, guess what? This is our 100th Sister to Sister show. That is over 700 questions, scriptures, stories, opinions. That's over 3,500 opinions, Amy. <laughs> yeah, and we still like each other. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't really feel 100, though. So stay tuned for more Sister to Sister than you can handle. Hello and welcome to Sister to Sister. This is our 100th show. I feel like it's kind of our anniversary, yes. but I'm not dressed for an anniversary party. <laughs> I don't have any bling. You've joined us and we are five opinionated, lovely women of God. And we do come to the problems of the world from a biblical perspective. We've been doing it 100 shows. Congratulations, sisters. Yay. And I, I'm just, you know, we're gonna talk about our history a little bit, but I remember when we were first asked to audition for Sister to Sister, and I was on television my whole life uh, for grocery stores and commercials, and I always wanted a talk show. I always, I always, because I love people so much, and God is so faithful. So be careful what you want, <laughs> what you want in your heart. And when Robin and Tim Bergen called me to audition for Sister to Sister, I knew that it was the promise of God in my heart from years and years and years. I'm so thrilled. Yeah. I'm so thrilled. I, I actually was gonna share a story from the auditions because ah. I remember we're sitting there, there were like a room full of women. Yeah, lots of women. Tons yeah. of women. And I didn't really recognize anybody, but I thought I recognized you. Yeah. And I was like, how do I know that lady? And then as soon as you open your mouth and talk, <laughs> I was like, that's a shop and save lady. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pastor Buck says I'm shopping and saving. Yeah. 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 Thank right. you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you for that. That's good. So do, are you happy oh, you're well, with us all well, these you years? Know, I, I, one fulfillment in my life is um, I never had sisters, biological sisters, although I love my sister-in-law. My mom's it's like my sister. My daughters are like my sisters now. It's so nice to be with sisters that are so different, have come from different backgrounds, right, but right. appreciate and love each other even though we disagree. But the one opportunity of the scripture says, he who wins souls is wise. And to share our faith on TV mm -hmm. and CTVN and the other broadcasts that come through, permitting us to say what we think, Amen. what we feel, right. and Roxy. apply the scriptures and some people out there getting saved, their lives being transformed, right. in the meantime is wonderful. Okay. And the second thing that I love about is leaving a legacy. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a lot of times you think about, gosh, does something happen to me? Would my daughters know I feel about something? Would my friends know? And it's like, we're recording what we feel, what we've experienced in our lives right. and giving glory to the Lord yeah. for what he's done through the problems, through the tears and also through the joy. Yeah. Yet we get to know each other like, like, like some sisters very joyful and one is serious about something. <laughs> and you know, and we're, learning, we're learning from each other and my personality, you know, a little bit's changing and my thoughts about things are changing. Yeah. And I think it's a wonderful experience. Thank I you. just have two, two questions things. One, um, I made it to the last audition and I, I thought it was very kind of funny that I even got called. Um, but <laughs> so I want to encourage you that are out there. If God has something for you, it's, it's there for you. Amen. You know, um, the other thing is that it was very much so a challenge for me, this type of platform. Um, I'm the serious one that she's probably referring to. <laughs> um, so it, and to, but I am blessed by God uh, because you have to be okay with how God creates, created you and mm -hmm. wired you. Right. And you are a catalyst mm -hmm. for whatever it is that God is wanting to do in yeah. his kingdom. And um, I can remember some of the shows for me being very, very challenging. Mm -hmm. um, I am a, a word girl. I like, I'm like upfront everything on the table. <laughs> um, and so, uh, but as you have so are well said, mm -hmm. um, 
just the blessing of being able to share faith mm -hmm. and being right. able to really help someone. Because right. you come, I'm in ministry, you come across people all the time mm -hmm. and people are dealing with issues right. and they want answers right. and they're not wanting to just be entertained and right. they don't want to see my fake yes. plastic face and, mm -hmm. and me just say some little, little cute cliche thing that doesn't help them in life. And That's this good. gives me a platform to do that and I'm grateful. And then when I look at how we have grown, when I seen mm -hmm. some of the earlier shows, <laughs> I thought, God, we're talking over one another, we're doing this, we're doing that. And I'm like, ah! And then as I see now, when I hear us using scripture, when I hear even at some, if you watched, answers have changed. If you watched mm -hmm. some of our earlier shows, answers and opinions have changed. And that is because iron does sharpen, sharpen iron. iron. Yes. And because That's the word cool. of God is true and does not return back void, yeah. uh, return back void. And so by us spending time in the word, we have been changed. So even though we might've had an opinion three years ago, if you listen to us today, you'll hear a different opinion. You've changed my life. <laughs> Amy, sister. I'm so thankful for really all of the people that watch. And I yes. know we all get people that stop us and just say, we watch Sister to Sister and we love that show. And really what a, I didn't realize how vulnerable this position and this opportunity is. Mm -hmm. you're, you're putting out deep values, deep mm -hmm. thoughts, deep personal stories, things that have helped you. Somebody else might you know, laugh at your thoughts or it, but you're, mm -hmm. it's such a vulnerable place. But in that That's vulnerability, good. their, their thoughts and opinions and views have, have, have tweaked me and changed my mm -hmm. thoughts on That's parenting. They, they've done longer parenting and further parenting mm -hmm. than I've done. Mm -hmm. the, it's like we help each other yes. and I like, yes. and yeah. We, we like each other, we love each other, but that doesn't mean we go out to dinner every Friday night. Right. So it's like we all lead these different lives, but we all love deeply and we're all committed That's to good. Christ. Amen. And yeah. getting his message out That's and right. his word and his scriptures. And so. That's, right. That's awesome. why when, when you said we get to talk about our faith, yeah. Jesus, 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 because you can't <laughs> say that on a commercial. <laughs> so I can say it there. <laughs> so happy. And you yeah. know what else I'm happy about? that some of us like reality shows. I know some of us like reality shows, <laughs> I do. So I have a question for you. What would be the title of a reality show about your life? When I read this question, my husband and I both fell out laughing. Number one, could you imagine some cameras trying to follow me around? No. <laughs> so we would all know Flo would not have a reality show. But as a team player, I'm going to answer the question, right, okay? Good girl. good girl. The name of my show would be called Life. Ah, okay. And if I could pick who I wanted in the show, one would be my sister who just recently passed, Kim, who was so oh. true to just who she was. I have a crazy cousin, yes cousin, I'm calling you crazy, on television, <laughs> Roz. And, uh, and then I have another cousin who's a little touched also, and that's Debbie. So by the time <laughs> <laughs> you would put the four of us together, I kind of think the show might get canceled before it got aired. <laughs> but if we were able to, you know, make, go get through it. I really think a lot of people would, after they got up off the floor from laughing, there would be a lot of people healed and helped Amen. because yeah. yes. I just, you know, just, just life. I don't think you need to add anything no. to it. You don't need to add any drama. You don't need to script it. Just yep. do life. Life has enough drama. And don't yeah. forget what Flo said. I do not lie. <laughs> do not forget that. It will be real. Would you even have a reality I, show? Yeah, I would. Uh, this, these I would. questions like we talked about really push us to places we never think about. So I had to go back in the recesses of my mind. And I finally came up with something uh, called Pushed with a Purpose. Ooh, wow. I have yeah. been, I have been kind of, although you think I'm aggressive or whatever you think I am, I'm not I sure. I don't, Roxy. Oh, thank you. Thank you, uh, And she doesn't lie. Uh, <laughs> so, Pushed with a Purpose. I went back to when I ran for a class representative and I lost. Which is high school? In high school, in All ninth right. grade. Okay. And the teacher pulls me up from the hall and I'm forlorn. She said, you need to run for class president. I'm like, no way, I lost, you're kidding me. Yes, I think you need to do that, go get your petition signed, whatever. I said, all right, I'll do what you want, and I, I did it, and I won. 
Okay. See, I lost one. You win another. <laughs> so, so Lord, the Lord knows. The same thing happened with I was going. I wasn't going to law school. I was done. I was got a job as a hospital administrator. My parents said, if you don't go on to school, we're not paying for anything. If you go, we'll pay. Otherwise, you're on your own. I'm like, uh oh. I better okay. do what they say, Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I. Apply to law school. I mean, so many times my husband, like, I want to get married after three months. I'm like, three months of dating? You must be crazy. <laughs> and no, we did wait till I was done with law school. But it was like, I always had to have a little nudge by someone who really knew me and loved me. That teacher, parents, my husband, whatever it our was, producer. our producer, yeah. you guys, yeah. on and on being pushed. So don't feel bad if somebody's pushing on you a little bit and you're agitated at them because God has something in store, Amen. something good. Don't be afraid to be pushed a little. I love that. It took the me name one of your second. reality show The Preacher's Wife. The Preacher's Wife. <laughs> Because I love Whitney Houston. I love everything church. Being married to the hottest pastor in Pittsburgh. Family, I think it would be a blast. Your, your title. I think I just want to be on all your shows. Okay. <laughs> all right, no, Cora, you have a great life. What would your no, title? I, I, I don't know what the title would be. I just, I would, it would have something to do with traveling and going around right. and being with my family. And, well, see, and family, that's what yeah. I had to, I, of course, asked George, what should our reality, yeah. our, because he's all in with me, yes. what should our Your reality, husband, sh my husband, George, be called? And we went all the way back to the Archie Bunker title called All in the Family. Oh. Oh. And that's what uh -huh. our reality show would be, <laughs> because cool. that's what I'm all about, All in the Family, and you are our family too. We are sister to sister. We have great questions like this. You better stay there because you never know what they're going to say. We'll be right back. Well, hello and welcome back to Sister to Sister. You're sitting in on our conversations, which are always <laughs> exciting. So this is a good question too. And it goes like this. I, I love this question. And it simply asks the sisters, what is the greatest symbol of wealth? I used to ask my mom when I was a little kid, are we rich? I, I didn't oh, have any yeah, idea of like economic before. status right, or whatever. Right, right. And I would say, Mom, are we rich? And she always gave me the same answer. And it was, we're rich in the Lord. She always gave me that same answer, which I love. And I give my kids the same answer. So it led me to think about for this answer, um, the Proverbs 31 woman okay. and the, the verse 28. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. To me, that's the symbol of wealth. I'm a wealthy woman if my children arise and my husband That's a good answer. I mean, no one's going to say Mercedes or diamond <laughs> rings. Well, you know, well, we were for young. me, it was like, um, it made me go to the definition, because you do think yeah. monetarily, materially. Right. That's that's yeah. usually what most people think about. Um, but thank God for our platform and the perspective right. that we're able to share. And, you know, abundance, uh, wealth is an abundance of possessions. And in Luke, it says, possess ye your soul. Oh. Okay. And so I feel that true wealth is having that possession of my soul lined up with the word of God. Work out your soul salvation with fear and trembling, not being out of control, not being a city that doesn't have walls That's with good. no yes. restraints, you know, because God would above all things that I prosper and be in health even as my soul prospers. Mm -hmm. So that to me is the real definition of wealth. Oh, I like that. Well, oh, I, you know, I, I really would never say Mercedes. Uh, I don't care about cars. I don't care about jewels, obviously. Love, I, think I do. I, like I love Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'll I think? Take one on the I'll take a car. I'll take a good car. But I think that the greatest symbol of wealth is generosity. Yes. So, oh, so good, when Kathy. someone, and I think mm -hmm. about my husband, he's not wealthy, but that man is so generous. So, when you're wealthy, 
and you can give. Oh, yeah. I, I think about like the Chick-fil-A guy, the owner of Chick-fil-A. Yes, like yes, those yes. those big people that are so wealthy and they just continue to give and give and give. Yes. So generosity is I, I'm amazing. with you on that because I feel like the person that can give away what they have share what they have is the wealthiest person right. on earth. It's easy to accumulate, but if you can give and impart to others, whatever it is, might not be financially, it might be of yourself, your servanthood, if you can give that away, and the scripture that came to my mind was Proverbs 11, give freely and become wealthy. Mm. Oh, be yeah. Same thing. be yeah. stingy and lose everything. Mm. So See, whatever we have, if we can give, it's a symbol that we're the wealthiest person. I love person. that. Be stingy and lose everything. I love that. Yeah. I don't think you need to be wealthy to be generous, though. That's true. I mean, you yeah. think That's of true. the widow's might, yeah. you know. Right. I think That's there are some of the wealthiest people that aren't generous, or they give a lot, yes. but it's only a small little portion of what they have. And yet those who don't have a lot that give freely whatever they have. So I don't think you... I don't think you need to be wealthy. That's true. Yeah. It was Cassie a brought me sliced vegetables, and I was like, that that's my favorite oh. gift I've ever oh. had. Yes. <laughs> she doesn't cook, remember? So, <laughs> but I'm a heck of a cutter. I can cut. <laughs> If you have Christ, you're you're the richest girl in town. Amen. And without Christ, you're broke as a joke and That's you're right. poor. That's Christ right. makes life rich. Amen. Oh, boy. These are really good answers. And yes. we, we were on the same plane as that. Yes. The, right. the symbol. Because I guess I was thinking of, no, of the world me. having symbols. Yeah, but I, I love your answers. Right. I love you, girls. <laughs> I love you. And and I wonder what you're gonna say to this one. And I had to think about this one too. And the question is, what fear have you overcome? You think about it too at home. What fear have you overcome? I don't know Ooh. that I have completely, if I'm honest, completely right. overcome all my fears. I do feel that I have grown and I have matured. And so I think one of my things was, believe it or not, um, sometimes I still can't believe it, but it was more about me understanding that or I had the thought pattern that I must be present or involved for everything to be okay. See, me oh, too. Wow. I do. Yeah. It, what's the one? Remember that FOBO? Fear of missing out. FOMO. FOMO. Miss, mm -hmm. Yeah, fear FOMO. of missing out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have that too. Mine kind was of. kind of along the we'll same line. We'll go for deliverance together. <laughs> no, I, mine was a kind of along the same line. It really? was the fear of saying no. Uh, it was the fear uh, of uh, what you know. How how are they going to take it? And how mm -hmm. you know? What, how are they going to look at me? And are they going to be mad? And are they going to be upset? And you know what? I I let go of that mm -hmm. fear, yeah, and I God. just yeah. started to be honest. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Really, yeah. it came down to honesty. Yeah. And. Mm -hmm. People appreciate honesty. Yeah, I yes. really do yeah. think that. And it was like, I just let my yes be yes and my no be no. Yes. And it's yes. so yes. freeing. It it's really right. is freeing. Tori, wow. we've had guests, we've had book guests on that. Yes. How, yeah. how we always say yes. We think we're being good little yeah. Jesus girls if we right. say yes. Right. Yeah, and if we don't say yes, then it's gonna get screwed up. Mm -hmm. We gotta do it. And if we say no, they're not gonna like us. Mm -hmm. right. Ah, this is good today. That's good. <laughs> well, you know, we talked about me being pushed with the purpose. So yeah. you're talking about yes. saying yes. Mm -hmm. I had to say yes in those situations. <laughs> yeah. uh, but sometimes you do have to say no. But because being pushed, I think, and like Flo said, I don't know that you ever totally get over your insecurity. Mm -hmm. You're like a work in progress throughout yeah. your life. I know, that's what I found. But every time I would be called to do something or somebody pushed me to do something, right. I was very insecure. Mm -hmm. Very insecure, like uh, first being uh, going to school and going to law school. How could I do this? I'm not that smart. I'm not, wow. you know, and, get, and then um, uh, getting married. You know, I went to seminars about marriage, but I'm not sure I'm ready for that. I was ready for work. And having children, oh my goodness, there were days when my hair, I'm just like kind of pulling out my hair, my parents come over, rescue me, whatever. Are you, are you taking me from this earth, Lord, because I'm not such a great mother? <laughs> I mean, you come to those points where you become so insecure about what you're doing, you're not sure you're supposed to be doing it. Well, but trust, trust me, people, you are supposed to yeah. be doing it. Yeah. You're learning through doing it because of my insecurity. I think it's enabled me to humble myself and realize I can't 
do it myself. And then a second thing, I work so much harder than everybody else did at something. I'd study twice as much. I would try to do things twice. You know, you, you work so hard because you're not sure you're doing it right. Then you get yourself oh in a frenzy gosh. a little bit. This is so, not something I would think about. I know. Oh, yeah. This is yeah. kind of like eye-opening yeah. and shocking. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, you know what, I'm going to go to this to this next question then, and you can continue. Oh, gosh. What lessons have you learned the hard way? Right. Anybody? To follow that strong intuition, or you have that feeling in your gut, and you know you're supposed to call this person, I call it really being led by the spirit. Like you, you feel the unction, you feel that initiative, and, and this person's not leaving your mind, and they're not leaving your mind every day, and you don't act on it. And then something happens, something was, and you see how, oh my gosh, if I had acted on that gut instinct, Two months ago, wow. I think oh, we could have good. stopped this whole path. Wow. And to really, and that's especially good. as a pastor and uh, leading people, just with staff, with <clears throat> key, like following that instinct, whether it's your children your, or your husband, following the voice of the Holy Spirit yeah. and that, that, yeah. uh, that, that gut feeling that you have. Because sometimes the, the catch way. is you don't even realize it's the voice of the Holy Spirit. Right, right. I, I know for me, I had to give it some thought and I, I wrote this one down. It says it, that, you know, it does not have to be okay with everyone for it to be okay or right. Mm -hmm. oh, because we have okay. that tendency, you know so, what I mean? That's and like then, the answer to your other question. Exactly. Yes. And that's so, that, that was like I'm saying, the, yeah. the, a work in progress, you know? And then it was like, and you're never going to make everybody happy. Right. So, uh, you know, um, those are just some of the things that I feel very deeply and very strongly and about and have learned throughout the year. So it's like, don't put that energy into that. Like you're talking about being led by the spirit. Mm -hmm. I had to learn to pick and choose my battles. You know, mm -hmm. don't engage in a battle that's not yours. Right. You know, there are some things I need to be still and know that it's God. Right. There are some battles I need to shake myself and pursue and recover all. And there are some battles that I just need to sit back, you know, and let the Lord handle it. Right, well, just what Corey said, let your yes be yes, yes. and your no be Amen. no, and stand firm and trust. Yes. If the Holy Spirit is guiding you, then you are making the right decision. And you know, you have my theory, you made the right decision watching sister to sister with us because we bring the problems from our heart right to your home. Yes. And stay right there, because we're gonna wrap this up. <clears throat> So that is our 100th show. It's so hard to believe over hundreds of scriptures that we've shared. And of course, we're gonna share another one with you today. This is from Philippians 1 verses three through six. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, make a request for you all with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing that he who began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And we thank God upon every remembrance of you viewers. Thank you for watching our show. Yes. Thank you for bringing us to 100 yes. shows. And I want you to think of somebody in your life that you can thank God for, that upon remembrance that you can lift up to God. And if you don't have someone in your life that can do that, remember this scripture, that Jesus Christ is there for you and will complete make completion in you. If you need to speak with someone today, there's a number on the screen that you can call. There's someone there 24 seven and will always be there to answer your call. And I thank my God upon every remembrance of yes, my sisters. Yes, well, I love the sisters so much. Okay, but here's what I want to tell you today, 
Amy is the same height as Flo <laughs> because Flo has little, little shoes on. <laughs> we always end sister to sister with this particular. Well, she has scriptures. Power shoes on, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it is. As iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a woman. These sisters sharpen the other. Guess what? They make me a better Kathy. <laughs>